what's going on? Thanks for checking out another video. In today's video, we're gonna be talking and going over Negative Lab Pro. Negative Lab Pro is a $99 Lightroom plugin for converting negatives into positives with a unique vintage original like 90s look. I was pressured into buying it from the whole internet, including an Instagram poll I did with two photos, one I used Negative Lab Pro on and one I used Epson Scan to scan. And the internet told me that I needed to spend $100 and buy this plugin. So basically what we're gonna go over today is how to actually use Negative Lab Pro in Lightroom Classic. It does not work in Lightroom that is on the cloud, like the new Lightroom. It only works on Lightroom Classic and Lightroom 6. We're gonna talk about how to take a negative and apply the plugin to it, the benefits of it, and then we're gonna do a couple of side-by-sides of Negative Lab Pro and the Epson Scan software that does it all for you and show you the difference. So I have my computer right here. I have Negative Lab Pro installed in Lightroom. So now I have Lightroom open, and as you can see here, I have four photos that I'm actually gonna be converting today. Two of them are from a roll of Portra 400 120, and then two are from Portra 400 roll of 35 millimeter, and we're gonna show you the differences. So let's start with the first Portra 400 120 piece of film. So I'm actually gonna choose this one. So we're gonna develop. This is a photo of my good friend Dimitri who has a great channel on YouTube for local ET or Astoria, you should check it out, I'll link it below. Um, but we were out in Astoria Park. I brought my Pentax 6.7 and a couple of rolls of film. And we just kind of walked around. Dimitri is a really great dresser, so I figured let's just take a couple of shots in the park here. And uh, this is one of the shots that I actually took. So we're gonna take this, and there's a couple of things we wanna do before we actually do the conversion with Negative Lab Pro. And this is super important. So real quick, all we have to do is over here, take our white balancing tool, click on that, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna travel down to where the border is. So you're gonna need to have some sort of border in the photo. Uh, I scan these using my Epson V600 in the border holders, but there's still a little bit of border to find. We're gonna wanna make sure that we have some of that in there, whether you scan it just on the glass or in the negative, or in the negative holders. So we're going to actually click on there, and when we do that, you can see it automatically white balances the negative for us. It takes us from that orange to more of a you know neutral kind of gray color for us to convert. So once we do that, the next important step we want to do is we want to crop it to now crop out those borders. Why? Because Negative Lab Pro will see those borders and change the whole kind of color scheme for the photo. Those borders are gonna be changed to black. If they're still in the photo during the conversion, it's gonna mess with the whole thing. So we wanna make sure that we crop in. Even though it seems like we don't have any borders on this side or this side, we're still gonna to wanna to crop in, crop in, crop the, the top, and then crop the bottom. We can always go back and uncrop them if we wanna get those borders in there. But once we do that, we click on that, and now we're gonna actually do a key command to get Negative Lab Pro to pop up. So all you have to do, and this is on a Mac, I'm using my 16 inch MacBook Pro. So this is something that is for Macs, for Windows, I'm not 100% sure, but let's assume you're just using a Mac and this is what we're using. So we just have to hit function, I'm sorry, we just have to hit control and N and up pops the Negative Lab Pro plugin. And there's a couple things we wanna go over here first. First, we wanna make sure we have a TIFF scan. So in Epson scan, when you're scanning the photos in, you wanna make sure that they're TIFFs. I mean, they're usually gonna to be scanning them in TIFFs anyway, because that's the highest resolution we want. We also wanna make sure that color sync is turned off. You can actually turn that off in the color management tool at the very bottom of the Epson scanner software. And we obviously want to make sure we're scanning in positives of the negatives. So up here, after that, we have the color model. Now there's basic, frontier, Nuritsu, and black and white. Hopefully I'm saying that right. But frontier and Nuritsu are the two ones that people always look for when they're scanning film. Why? Because it gives up that unique vintage like 90s film camera. So these are the two we're gonna use. They don't look incredibly different, but I will show you the differences real quick here. So we'll first 
pick Frontier. And now below, we have pre-saturation. You have very low, low, default, medium, and high. I like to keep it on low. The reason being is because I love film that has a very pastel, muted kind of colors look. You can always change it with saturation when you're editing. So I'd rather keep it low and bring it back on my own terms and then have them do it and then I have to adjust it. So I just keep it on low. After that, we have a border buffer of 5%. We don't really have to worry about that. Next, we hit convert negatives. Now, this is not damaging. This, when we hit this, doesn't mean that the photo is completely changed and we can't make any changes. This is kind of just giving us a preview. And then after the preview, we hit apply here at the bottom and then we apply it to the actual photo. So let's hit convert, give it a second. And now it's converted it. And now it's giving us the converted look using a frontier. Real quick, before we move on to this, let's just go back, convert, reset photo, continue. And that takes us back to the, the positive. And let's just see what the Nuritsu looks like. It looks pretty much the same. I mean, there's not really a huge difference. It looks pretty much the same. So let's just stick with Nuritsu then. Up here, you have a bunch of different kind of adjustments you can do here. I mean, you can do them in Lightroom, but you can start here. So it's a little bright. So let's lower the brightness a little. And maybe lower the darkness, so the darks a little, and the blacks just a little. You want to get that contrasty look without raising the contrast a little too much where it makes it a little too crunchy. So that's what I like to do. And then down here we have sharpen. I like to sharpen it a little, set for the scanner. It takes one step out that I don't have to worry about. And you can see if we click that, it looks a little sharper. It's hard to notice, but it looks a little sharper. So I like how this looks. Now we hit apply. And now we're done and we can go on to our levels over here and work with them and make the photo look as good as we want and change things up, you know, change just like we would in a normal photo. I brought the vibrancy up too much. And now we can play with it and adjust it and everything. So now I'm going to export this and I'm going to show you a side by side next to what I actually got when I let the Epson scan software convert the photo for me, and you're gonna see how different it is. And we're gonna compare that right now, and then we're gonna move on to a 35 millimeter frame. So here on the screen now, we actually have a side-by-side -side comparison of, on the left, we have the scan that, was, that came out of the actual Epson software, and on the right is the one that we converted ourselves and not letting the software on Epson convert for us. And off the bat, there's some things we can see differently. First thing I can notice is that the color on the Epson side is a little bit more green. Now that is something we can change in Lightroom, agreed. There's so much more editing you'll have to do with an Epson scan than you would if you just use Negative Lab Pro. We are using film and we're scanning it digitally. We're looking to get that film look. So we want to get it as close as possible to the scanning machines that we used in the past without having to do all of this editing. Negative Lab Pro has basically saved me a ton of editing to do on these photos. But let's look a little bit deeper at a couple of things because I'm a little bit of a... So if we zoom in a little, we can see that it's a little, it's a little sharper on the Epson scan. For some people, that's a big benefit. For people who really care about sharpness of photos, that's a huge benefit. But we have to remember, what are we again trying to get out of these photos? We're trying to get that classic vintage look. And to be honest with you, when I look at this photo, freshly scanned as opposed to the one we scanned and worked on with Negative Lab Pro, the one from the Epson almost looks a little too perfect, almost like it was kind of done with a digital camera. Yes, it's definitely got a better look, but I prefer the look of the Negative Lab Pro over the Epson scan because it just looks more like it was taken with a film camera than opposed to a digital camera. Next, let's do a shot that was taken on my Canon AE-1 35 millimeter camera. Right now in Lightroom, I have a slide that was taken on that camera. It's a 35 millimeter camera. It's of a car I saw when I was at the Long Island City Flea Market. And again, let's just do a couple of things to get this photo ready to be converted with Negative Lab Pro. First, what we have to do is we gotta white balance it. So there's not a lot of border here, so I zoomed in a little bit, and I'm just gonna click right there. So now it's been balanced. Again, we wanna crop to make sure that Negative Lab Pro doesn't run into any sort of hiccups with the borders. So we crop it in a little. 
And then again, we hit control and N and up pops our negative lab pro widget. I'm gonna, this time I'm gonna do frontier, keep it on low and convert. And now we'll see what it looks like. Again, it's a little bright for my taste, but that's something we can easily just bring down and mess with. So now I just hit apply and now there it is. It's been converted. I'm just gonna do a couple of quick edits to really make it pop. All right, so that looks good to me for right now for a really quick edit. So let's export it. And now here I've brought up the Negative Lab Pro and then the Epson Scan 1. Which one do you think is the Epson Scan 1? Yeah, it's the one on the right this time. I switched it up, fooled you. <laughs> Got it! So there are a couple of dust marks on here. I will admit I, the, the time, the second time I scanned this, I didn't scan it very cleanly, my bad, but that's something you can easily take out in Photoshop or in Lightroom. But again, we can see the, the one on Epson is a little bit greener. Again, yes, something we can change in Lightroom, but it just looks flatter. It doesn't have any character. It doesn't have any nostalgia or style where the one on the left, the Negative Lab Pro one, looks more like something we would get out of a camera from that time period and scanned in those scanners. It looks really good. You know, everything looks nice and clean, sharp where it should be, colors are good. It just looks nice and vintage in what we're looking for. Again, nothing against Epson scans. They are sharp, they look good. With a couple of minor adjustments, you can make a photo really look good, but I just really like the Negative Lab Pro aspect of it. So that is what the scans look like when you edit them. Let's just talk about a couple of things you should know before you actually get Negative Lab Pro. One, it is a $99 purchase. You get a license and you get to use it. There is a free trial though. You get 12 or 15 free conversions before you actually have to buy. So you get to test it. I'm going to leave the link below for Negative Lab Pro so people can try it out. I definitely recommend doing the free trial before you actually get into it and purchase it. Two, Again, it's only gonna work on Lightroom Classic or Lightroom 6, not the newer cloud-based Lightroom. It just doesn't work on that. Uh, you are gonna have to change some things when you're using an Epson scan. Uh, you're gonna wanna make sure it's a TIFF. You're gonna wanna make sure to turn off that color sync to get the most accurate colors. And lastly, you just wanna have fun with it. I mean, this program was put out by a indie developer to help photographers get that more natural Frontier and Naritsu kind of look. So have fun with it, enjoy it. It is a great plugin. The money goes to a developer that developed this for the community. It's not just some like corporation. So definitely if you like it, buy it from him. He's great, he's very helpful and he has some great tips and tricks on his website to help you get started with it. And always remember, they are non-destructive edits. So if you don't like how it looks, you can always go back. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you liked it. I hope you learned something from it. And I hope you found a new tool to use for your editing of photos. If you like this video, please subscribe, like, leave a comment. But until then, remember to just shoot and I'll see you in the next one.